Welcome back to SiteTech Intermountain SiteWorks training videos. Today we're going to do SiteWorks machine guidance. We're going to use an excavator, a 323 excavator, that has the ability to run machine guidance on it using just my rover. It's not a full 3D machine. If you're unfamiliar with SiteWorks machine guidance, what it's going to do is going to allow me to take my rover here and go do a site calibration and actually set up the job site, have the models loaded in here, and then go ahead and take my rover head and my data collector, put it on the machine, and we're going to start digging. In this little demo area right here, I've got three to four different designs. I've got a footings design, I've got a basement design, I've got a roadway design, and I've also got some storm drain. But I want to show you the process, how simple it is, and how you can actually use what you've got on a smaller scale to be able to do two different things instead of having your own rover here that you would just do a site calibration and then put the rover away and go get on your Earthworks machine and use that, we're going to use the system for one. We're going to use my rover to do all that, throw it on the machine and start digging. So let's go ahead and get started by setting up my job site. Okay, so starting from ground one, we're going to go ahead and throw in my thumb drive. And I'm going to go ahead and start a brand new project. We're going to hit the menu button, going to go to project setup and change project. In here, we're going to go ahead and name a new project and we're going to call this the uh, site works. Finish grade models. So what I've got here is a VCL file. So with all four of those different designs, I've got one file that's going to take care of this. We're going to leave it US survey feet, point northern easting, that's my control. We're going to bring in the control points in this box right here, which is my CSV file. I'm going to go onto my thumb drive and look for it. And there's my southeast lot right there. As soon as I go ahead and bring in my SiteWorks Machine Guidance Southeast Lot CSV, I'm going to hit Finish. I'm going to hit over here and do Calibration for my setup. We're going to call this the uh, Finish Grade Models. And I don't need to separate it out here because it's just going to be one file that comes in, which is my SiteWorks VCL file right here. It's going to have all those models in there. So it's going to auto-populate both of those right there, and we're going to hit Finish. So my project is set up. Now I can pick which design I want to start with. It doesn't really matter. We'll just go ahead and start with maybe the basement. There's three different surfaces, but when I say four different models, what I meant is the storm drain isn't an actual model, but it's line work that's in there. So right off the bat, there's my control around the project. I usually like to get the gear and go and turn on point name. I like to do that when I do a site cal so I can see the names of the control points on the screen and it's kind of a cluttered mess in the middle right here we've got the roadway the footings and the basement which yes are all stacked in the same spot but just for the training purposes what i can do for that is i can hit my layers on the right side right here and i can actually unselect all of those and say hey i want to start with the basement and only check that on so if i do that it cleans up the screen quite a bit but i still have my control points so now with my rover on up here we're going to go ahead and set up and hook up to the local base that I have here. The quick start to do that is just hit the measure mode right there, and it's going to say you need to connect to a device. We're going to go ahead and hit GNSS. We're going to go right through this process, rover, Bluetooth, and I'm going to scan for it. It probably would be in my list, but I like to scan usually every time. It kind of makes sure that the Bluetooth is connecting and working. So once we've got that, we're going to do radio and receiver because we're picking up a local base that is on channel 10. Once it's found that, which is my Wheeler Machinery SLC, I am going to do quick release and I'm going to do no on tilt compensator because even if I said yes, it will tell me that I can't have the tilt compensator on in order to do a site cal or set new control, whatever it may be. So rover setup is complete. Do you want to calibrate the site now? Yes, I do. So I'm going to pull my thumb drive out. We're going to go ahead and go pound out a a quick calibration for five different control points. So to start, we're going to hit the plus button right here. And we'll walk over to the very first one, which is going to be my control point 5010. I'm going to hit select. I've got my quick release on 6.562, and I'm going to let it do the, the traditional 15 seconds. So we've got one done. Let's just hurry and work through all these other ones. Now that I've hit one, I can actually hit the plus button and click my next one if I didn't know where it was at. Now if I click on it, it's going to start walking me towards where to go. So here's my second one. Going to go ahead and do the same thing on this. 
A good rule of thumb is if you don't trust your bubble right here, you want to make sure it's accurate. But if there's any chance that it's off a little bit, try to face the same way every time you do the sight calibration so that you don't have 180s on your bubble. If there is error, at least the error will be consistent. Okay. So done on the second one, we're going to go ahead and just march our way right around the project here. So there's our third point. I'm going to go ahead and start on that one. After the third point, we're going to start seeing what our residuals are. So there's our current residuals after three, which will still change now that I'm going to hit two more. But we're looking pretty good so far. We're within a hundredth. So here's my third point. Hit start on it. Go ahead and go 5,013. Start that one. Calibration actually got just a hair tighter. We just have one more control point to finish this out. Okay, very last control point. Go ahead and start that, and then we'll see what the residuals are after we're done. All right, calibration looks really, really good. It's a, The horizontal is only a hundredth, vertical is an eight thousandths. Good calibration, don't need to change anything here. Hit finish, accept calibration, yes. Calibration complete. And then the infamous question, do you want to save the base location as a control point? Yes, 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 all the time say yes to that. So now my project is set up, I'm ready to go. I've got northing easting's elevations. We can go over where the machine's at and where the design is, do a couple checks. Once we get inside the model here, we can go ahead and verify that everything's good. So the model right here has a deeper end and a higher end. That's my higher end. We're good to go. At this point, you can use the rover if you needed to, to do any of your own layout. So if you needed to lay out corners, if there was another machine on the job site uh, that didn't have machine guidance or control of any point, you can do layout grade checks, paint corners out. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and throw this on the machine and we're going to go ahead and start digging just from straight on the machine with the same exact stuff that we just set up to actually do the site calibration. Okay, so we're done with this. We're going to go ahead and curl the machine down and set it up on there. So take your quick release off. I just spin it off and throw it back on the pole so I don't lose it. Take the star mount here, and remember the face plate goes towards the operator seat, and the door stays on this side for the battery. We have our power cable option here that we use. Go ahead and gently throw the power cable in there, and be careful so you don't bend the prongs. And we're good to go here, so now we can go ahead and go inside the machine with the data collector. All right, now that we're back in the machine, we're just going to go ahead and raise it up. And right now, we're still in the walking mode right here, as you can tell. What we've got to do is click this and change it to machine mode right there in the bottom. It says it, it requires the tilt compensator, yes, and it's also going to need to connect to the onboard IMU sensor. So we're going to head and hit the drop-down bar, and we're going to pick the Tech 323 machine with the 48-inch bucket and hit accept. And it's going to need to connect to the IMU, so you go ahead and hit connect yes on that. So once we're good there, don't worry that everything's flashing red. It just wants us to initialize that IMU sensor. I found that going faster is better than going slower. That IMU sensor is up at the very top, so if you go slow, there's not a lot of movement unless you go kind of fast. Once you've done that, everything lights up. Now you've got the excavator screen or excavator icon on the right side here, also over where the standing mode was. Now it's excavator, and you've got your bucket option in the middle right here. You've got the bucket focus point option right here, which is that next one underneath. Do you want to be left, center, or right? I'll leave it on the center for right now. And if we zoom down in, you're going to notice that there's a line right there. That line represents the width of your bucket. That's where if I all of a sudden put the focus point on the left, it switches left, et cetera, et cetera. We're just going to leave it right in the middle for right now. Now we can go ahead and spin over where about I was checking with the uh, rover earlier and actually look and see there is about a cut of eight tenths right there, seven tenths. So we're good to go to start digging even without having any sort of um, layout on the ground right there. It's just like your normal Earthworks machines or GCS machines using one device to be able to do the site calibration and then start digging. So let's go ahead and start digging and see how, how good we can do here.
So if you had a situation where right now you can see as I zoom in, I'm kind of digging just a little bit beyond just kind of eyeballing it. The beauty of this is you can also stake the line like you normally would with a data clicker by touching and holding on it and picking that line, staking that line. And then if you needed to do like an over dig from it, what you could do is go into your stake out line settings here and you could put in, let's say, a two foot over dig to uh, the left side because of the way the arrows are going there. So now as you zoom in, if I put my focus point on that side over there, I can use my horizontal light bar to actually know when I'm there. So one way is horizontal light bar. Two is uh, to change this. You could put this into uh, info panel and actually watch your inward outward. So there's just another option if you needed a two foot over dig. So if we just need to shave just a little bit more off there. So there's the ability to do that is staking an actual line. If you want to be done with that, just hit menu and measure to cancel yourself out on that. And you can continue to dig or move the screen over to see full screen. The other thing you could do if you ever wanted to see it in 3D while you're doing it is actually change this to 3D slicer view and move that over if you needed some sort of a reference as to what's going on here. So we can zoom way down in on the model. We can roll it and actually see right where we're at right there and what we're digging and you can see that there's going to be a step in the model as I get going. That step's going to be if I swing over to the side here right about there because I've got both this plan view and I've got that. So we're going to go all the way from a, a cut of 120 to a cut of 340 right there. The other thing you could do if you're kind of curious what's going on right here is you can also change this one to cross section. So if you put that one in cross section and then change to this view now you can actually see what's going on through the model right there where I've actually got the step. So if I run over until I get that right side of my bucket right there, that's exactly where that step is. So if you ever had to just mark some stuff out there, then you have just a general idea of what's going on there. So, so now what we can do is go ahead and get ourselves lined up with that footing drop right there.